السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We commence in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most gracious, the most merciful We commence also by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the creator, the nourisher, the cherisher, the sustainer, the provider, the protector, the curer, the one in whose hands lies the solution to all the difficulties and the problems that we have. May he help us and guide us through the challenges and the problems. May he create ease for us. Amin. We send blessings and salutations upon the chosen one, the best of creation, the most noble of all messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muhammad ibn Abdullah al Hashimi al Qurashi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah bless him, his household, his companions, and every one of us. May Allah bless us and grant us goodness in this world and the next. My brothers and sisters, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he grew up, he was known as one of the finest youth of Makkah one of the finest youth of Quraysh. As he grew up, he was not known for a single lie, not even jokingly. He didn't lie, no lies. As he grew up, he was known as a very, very trustworthy person. No matter what you entrusted him with, he fulfilled it from the very beginning. Pause for a moment and ask yourselves, have we been that honest? Question number one. That means we need to look within ourselves about our own truthfulness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was preparing him for something grand. He was coming with the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there could never be a single blemish in the issue of truthfulness of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are his followers. We would like to emulate and follow as best as we can. Cut out falsehood, my brothers and sisters. You want to be somewhere close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of judgment? Cut out lies, no lies. Don't utter a lie. Because moments ago we heard a beautiful poem being rendered wherein all of us were taken into the various qualities of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what he looked like, what was the surroundings, etc. with a wish that we were there. Well, perhaps we were not there because Allah knew that if we were there, we may have been a very big embarrassment. The reason is, and I take you forward to the prohibitions. Whatever the messenger has instructed you, follow. Whatever he has prohibited, stay away and be conscious of Allah. Imagine when the prohibitions came down through the blessed lips of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the likes of alcohol, the day it was prohibited completely and the people in Medina Munawwara were told by a third party that you know what, these intoxicating drinks have been made prohibited now. Imagine if we were there. Imagine if we were there. We would say, who told you? I don't believe you. Right? I want to hear it myself. Horse's mouth. Astaghfirullah. We would have said whatever. Ah, you know, I'm weak. Make dua for me. Allah, give me hidayah. That's what we would have said. I promise you. So Allah knew that that embarrassment would probably be there. Allah says, you know what? You are not fit to be Sahaba. Sahaba, we need strong men. May Allah grant us the strength. When they were told from a distance, they heard a voice of a caller calling that khamr has been made haram. They even spat out what was in their own mouths without even waiting for second clarification. This is where they got their rank. 
Sahaba radiallahu anhum. My brothers and sisters, we will be in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we all yearn for in the akhirah only if we try also to follow. When someone says cigarettes bad, quit the habit. We don't have to say, but it's not that bad. The ulama only said it's makroo. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. You cannot quit. You cannot quit one small thing and you want to be achieving the pleasure of Allah. One thing. You can't quit a little a flick. Adultery is being committed. Pornography is being watched. Gambling is happening. Interest is being eaten. Alcohol and intoxicants and drugs are being consumed and taken. And here we have Rasulullah sallallahu we want to be with him on the day of Qiyamah. My brothers, I want it. My sisters, we all want it, don't we? Cut out these bad habits. You will be there by the will of Allah. You want to be there, right? I want to be there. Cut it out. Learn to improve yourself for the sake of Allah. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be very hard. My sisters, my brothers, to dress appropriately. Imagine you were walking on the streets of Peter Maritzburg or Durban and the messenger, peace be upon him, were to pass, would you even be recognized as a member of the Ummah based on your dress? Would you? If the answer is no, change your dress. Come on. Never mind what people think, you know. Subhanallah. I still don't understand why when they see a semi-nude woman, they say, she looks hot. Have you heard that? <laughs> Did you realize that heat, does it come from Jannah or Jahannam? I don't even want to answer that. You realize that? Why didn't they say something else? They say, she looks hot. And the other guy says, hey, very hot. You now need to know what you're talking about. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. The blessed messenger, the greatest of creation, the most noble of all prophets, whatever he taught us was only for our benefit, never for our harm. If he told you cover, you cover because it is beneficial. Whether you realize it or not is besides the point. If he said you do this, you do it. وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَارَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ A true believing male or female, whenever Allah and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have dictated something, they would never ever feel in their hearts that they have a choice about it. They don't have a choice, they will do it. You don't have a choice, do it. May Allah strengthen us with our salah. Five salah a day. Today we're excited to be in the masjid. This is the house of Allah. Allah has allowed us to be in His house. Allah put it in our hearts to be in His house. That's why we are here. It's a sign of the love of Allah. Remember, Allah loves you. That's why you are in His house. Can you just go into the house of someone like that? You can't. There needs to be a connection. You can walk in at any time. This is the house of your Lord. Subhanallah. Walk in any time. When you've come here, it's a sign of the love of Allah. Follow it through by loving Allah back. Subhanallah. Salatul Fajr, very important. May Allah strengthen all of us to fulfill it. Let's go back to the point I was making. The Prophet ﷺ was known as the truthful one. I said, are we really truthful? Inshallah, we can do more about that. Be truthful, be transparent. No need to be embarrassed about anything that you are doing or saying. Because you know what? You are as clear as can be. We can do that. We can try. I also spoke about the importance of cutting bad habits in order to earn the pleasure of Allah and the company of Muhammad on the day of Qiyamah and in the Akhirah. It's not too late. We can still be companions, not in this dunya, but at least in the Akhirah. Al-mar'u ma'aman ahabba. The Prophet says, a person will be with whom he loves. But that love is not just a word that you utter. You have to prove it. Prove it. You know, when you tell someone in this world, I love you, you could be lying, right? But in the heart, Allah knows, even if you haven't said, I love you, Allah knows you really love, right? We need to prove this by actions, by trying to be the best we can. And I promise you, we will be connected to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa on that day of Qiyamah and even beyond that. 
I always am intrigued by the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ speaks about how he said, I will be sitting on the hawd. The hawd is a pond. The day of judgment, as we are crossing, there is this pond. Rasulullah ﷺ will be sitting there and he will recognize the people. Only Allah knows exactly how. He will recognize the members of his ummah and he will call them to that pond. How will he recognize them? A narration says, the places that they used to wash when they used to make wudu during the day will have such a shine that they'll be recognized. This is from my ummah, he's from my ummah, she's from my ummah, etc, etc. My brothers and sisters, take your time in making wudu. It will be a means of your recognition on that beautiful day. May Allah grant that to us. Then the Prophet ﷺ was also known as trustworthy. Trustworthy. Why? Because the biggest amana ever, the biggest entrustment ever was about to come through him to us. If he was not known as trustworthy and honest, do you really think that the people would have accepted what he said? One of his best friends was a man known as Abdullah ibn Uthman. One of the best friends of the Prophet ﷺ. What was his name? Abdullah ibn Uthman. Who knows another name of the same man? Who knows another name of the same man? Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. This young boy, I sat next to him and asked him, What is your name? He said, Mubarak. I told him, Eid Mubarak. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you ease. MashaAllah. Abu Bakr, he is right. Many of us would not have known that. Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu, his father was known as Abu Quhafa. He himself, his proper name was Abdullah. And his father's proper name was Uthman. So he was known as Abdullah ibn Uthman radiallahu anhuma. My brothers and sisters, that man probably knew the messenger peace be upon him better than a lot, if not all. Close friends. The day that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa returned from Mi'raj and the Quraysh were trying to scoff and laugh they knew that this man never lied before. They knew that this man is trustworthy, honest. They tried to make a mockery of Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu by saying to him, if someone were to say that they went from one place to another, meaning from Mecca all the way to Al-Aqsa and from there up to the seven heavens and from there coming back and from there all the way here in one, hour, in one night, in part of a night, would you believe it? So obviously it depends who and what and where and why, you know, subhanallah. Obviously it would be difficult to believe unless you knew the credentials of the person. If any one of you were to tell me that, I would say it's a lie, right? Because we know the standard of truthfulness in today's world. When the minute Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was told, your friend, He's claiming that. He said, Wallahi, if he's claiming that, he's speaking the truth. He's speaking the truth. If he doesn't lie about the, the dunya, the worldly material, gold and silver, do you really think he's going to lie about the akhirah? When people lie today, what do they lie about? They lie mainly about money, dollars, this, that. You want to get married, you lie. You want to sell a car, you lie. You want to do this, you tell a lie. Because you just need to get something for the dunya. Allah says, hang on. If you haven't lied for the dunya, chances are you would not ever lie about the akhirah, about the deen of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. Amen. The reason I'm telling you this is look at the credentials of the man. Forget about cream of the crop. There was no comparative crop to say cream of it. He was on another level, totally different level. No comparison. You cannot compare Rasulullah with any other human being. He was in the presence of Quraysh. They saw him from the time he was born. 
They witnessed miracles. They saw so much. They loved him as a child. They loved him as a teenager. He was very helpful. He joined a business. He worked for a lady. He worked for a lady called Khadija bint Khuwailid radiyallahu anha. And he did a bit of business for her. And he was known as the honest. Why did Allah make him do a business trip for Khadija? Anha. There are many reasons, some we would know, some we wouldn't know. Let me explain one or two. Number one, a man is known regarding his truthfulness when he is the most honest in his business dealing. In his business dealing. If I ask you, do you know this businessman? You say, yes. Have you done business with him? Yes. For how long? For so long. Has there been a discrepancy? If you say there hasn't been a discrepancy for a single rand. And I've dealt with him large amounts. Isn't that a good credential? Isn't that something very good? May Allah make us businessmen of that nature. Hence, the Prophet says, An honest businessman who is upright, truthful, he will be resurrected with the Prophets of Allah. You see, you are upright, honest. Brother, I'm selling you this car. I want you to know it was damaged. I want you to know we panel beated it. It looks better than original, but it was panel beated. I don't want to lie to you. Instead of saying never, no damage. And you're looking at the damage and you're hoping the man doesn't notice it. Subhanallah. That's where we have come today. And good, good people, five salah, they will do that. Five salah. They say, no, my salah is in order. Allah is ghafoorul rahim. You know, may Allah forgive us. We use the term Allah is most forgiving, most merciful in order to commit a sin against Allah. That's not how it works. You, how can you claim to love the messenger, peace be upon him? What did you learn from him? So he did the business. He was known even after that, not only to be honest regarding a rand, but the scent of within the rand. Subhanallah. The smallest amount he had, the hisab and the barakah and the blessings were such that this woman did not see such prophets before in her life. She was much older. Later on, there was something else that happened. The proposal of marriage came predominantly from the lady's side. She was much older. Those who accused later on the messenger, peace be upon him, of wanting women they were the ones who were actually making a mockery of themselves because in his peak when he was 25 when he was in his age if he was astaghfirullah a womanizer do you really think that he would have married someone much older who was previously married where are the men where are the men from amongst us who look with respect to those who were previously married the young who want to get married they want to marry sometimes a person who was previously married and maybe a little bit older. The father who reads Salah five times a day will say, no ways. You're not marrying her. Number one, she's two months older than you or one year or five years. Number two, she was previously married. And that person claims to be a lover of the messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him. Where is your brain gone? Where is your deen gone? How can you allow shaitan to enter your territory such that you are, your brain is knocked? Knocked. You are insulting the Nabi of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We can't do that. This is just an example. He had all his children from her besides one who was Ibrahim. Who was from Maria al-Qibtiya radiallahu anha. The rest of the children were from the same lady. His wives later on, all of them besides one were previously married. You realize that besides one. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Where are the men from amongst us? Today, the stigma attached to a divorced woman is such that, you know, we consider her secondhand. A'udhu billah. Where is your love for the messenger? If that was the case, he would have only married those who were never married before. He married those who were older than him and they were all previously married. Besides one, subhanallah, rabbil alameen. Anyway, we move further. Later on, after that marriage, when he was 25, she was, according to the majority of narrations, 40 years old. And even some of the narrations that mention an age slightly below 40, they all, all say that she was older than him. I tell you, he lived a blissful life. He was known as a brilliant person. When the kuffar of Quraysh had a problem, 
He was one of those whom they asked to help them resolve the matter. When there was a dispute, he was asked to help them resolve the disputes. And guess what, my beloved brothers and sisters, the day that Allah chose him and he was granted nubuwa and prophethood, the same moment that he told his people that I am a warner, I have been sent by Allah to warn you about a day that is coming. And I can tell you the same thing and I can remind myself exactly the same thing. The Prophet Muhammad was sent by Allah to warn us. Warn us about what? A day when you're going to go back to the same Allah who created you. So prepare for that day. That's what the warning is. By doing what? Worship Allah. Be a good person. Fulfill your duties. Stay away from prohibitions. Seek a lot of forgiveness of Allah. The moment he told them that, guess what they said? Number one. هذا ساحر كذاب. Big accusations again. Big accusations. Imagine a man who was only known as truthful and honest. First time he warned them about something, they said he's a liar. Number one, they said he's a liar. Telling a lie. How, how could Allah have revealed to you? But I've never lied to you. You know, I've never ever. He's now 40 years old, not even a child. Why would someone who didn't lie for 40 years about anything come at the age of 40 and tell you a big lie? And what was the lie? The beauty is the lie was according to them. The lie was about nothing promoting himself, but about serving your maker who made you. That's it. That's it. He wasn't promoting himself. That was never a lie. It was the truth. Those who knew, they recognized. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. He was a cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Young boy. He lived with the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Abu Talib, there came a time when he had difficulty taking care of his children because of poverty. So he sent Ali radiallahu anhu as a young person to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You take care of him. So he grew up in front of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The day Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that this is what happened. The first person ever to accept the message was the same lady Khadija binti Khuwailid radiallahu anha. Have you thought of something? She knew the man did not rob me in my business. The man married me although he could have married anyone in the entire world he chose to marry me against all odds it goes to show the qualities you need to look at when you're marrying husband or wife and on top of that I've lived with him as a wife and he's been the best father to the children, the best husband one could ever have. Today he is saying, Allah has sent some message to me. I believe he is speaking the truth. She was the first to believe. Completely the first. When your own wife bears witness about you, then you are someone. Subhanallah. You are someone. MashaAllah. If your wife can say that this man is an excellent man, loving husband, brilliant human being, very good when it comes to his duties unto Allah, a loving father, a great person. Wallahi, that person needs to be kissed on his forehead by his own wife. Mashallah. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. But it's a fact. So she believed first if he wasn't with us. Tell me something. My beloved brothers and sisters, you want to know how far we have strayed from the sunnah and from the teachings of Islam. You go to your wife telling her the truth, she won't believe you. Do you know that? You go to her telling her the truth, she won't believe you. And sometimes she comes to you telling you the truth, you will, you will doubt maybe. Why? Because that's where we've gone so low. We lied most of our lives. The day we come and say wolf and there's a real wolf, let's say, yeah, you're lying. Because three times there were no wolf and you lied. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. So this Nabi was the greatest. The first to accept was his wife. Then the one who grew up in front of him, Ali, Abi Talib radiallahu anhu and his, and from the men, it was Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, his closest circle, closest circle. They accepted it quick, quick, because they knew truthful. 
He's an honest man. And when Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu anhu, for your information, he was instrumental in the acceptance of Islam of most of the first 10 of those believers who came in one after the other. He was instrumental. They were his friends. He went, he said, you know what? He's speaking the truth. Subhanallah. Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu anhu, he was a slave. He was dark. He was from Africa. And he accepted you know what? That same shahada raised him so high in, in the degree, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was penalized. He was punished. He was beaten up. He was taken out into the stones and the sand of the desert. And he kept on saying, I believe in one, the one, the one, the one, Allah. These idols, they are nothing. These sticks and stones, they are nothing. I believe in Allah. Ahadun, 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 ahad. He kept on repeating this. When the Prophet ﷺ went up in Mi'raj, he says, Ya Bilal, sami'tu khashataka fil jannah. You know that ahadun, ahad sound he was making with his own mouth. The Prophet ﷺ says, I heard you, your footsteps in jannah. Imagine the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ coming back from Mi'raj. And out of all the people, whoever was told whatever, he looked for Bilal ibn Rabah. Hey, you know what? I heard your footsteps. Imagine what Izza this man received automatically. Subhanallah. This is why we say those who believe that Allah separates by race or by color, they are ignorant. They know nothing about Allah. I always say, when someone respects you for who you are, they have only then recognized who Allah is. And it's only the ones who know Allah who will actually appreciate what Allah made. If you see a poor person on the side of the street and you take a moment to greet him, only to greet him, to make him feel a little bit good, it means you have recognized Allah. You know why? Allah made him. I'm impressing that Allah I want Allah to be happy with me and I want to please him. But I haven't even acknowledged the other creatures that the same Allah I'm trying to please has made. How are you going to get the pleasure of Allah when you haven't recognized Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us how even to respect and honor the other creatures of Allah is a sign of your connection with Allah. Look at the man who got Jannah because he quenched the thirst of a dog. It was a dog. Subhanallah. He got Jannah because of that. Because he realized this is a creature of Allah. If I am good to it, it means I've understood this is also a creature of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So the Prophet ﷺ was accused of being a liar. His circle knew he was truthful. But that accusation will come to us. Anyone who does anything good, anyone who wants to spread any form of goodness one way or another, you will be accused from the day you open your mouth. If you don't open your mouth, you're a good guy. Open your mouth. If Allah has blessed you in one way or another, they will accuse you. Even if Allah has blessed you with wealth, they will accuse you. They will accuse you. What will they say? Hey, this guy is pushing drugs, you know. You heard that. Hey, this guy, you know how he, mafia style, you know how they make money, you know. My brother, did you see it? Did you witness it? Are you just hearing? Are you ready to go into the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and throw forward all your witnesses who witnessed that this man's halal earnings were actually haram? Did it affect anything you had? Zero. Not at all. Your money didn't increase or decrease by you opening your mouth, so keep it shut. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. May Allah forgive us. They said he was a liar, kathab. Then the other term in the same ayah that Allah tells us, the accusations of Quraysh against Rasulullah they said, Sahir, he's a magician. Why did they say magician? Because anyone who listens to him, they accept the message. Anyone who listens to him, you're lending him an ear, they'll accept the message because Allah gave him that power. He knew and he was speaking sense. If I talk to you, I tell you, brother, one plus one. Two. We say yes, two. Khalas. What magic is that? It's common logic. I showed it to you. In front of your face, I showed you. Subhanallah. They say, The kuffar used to say, Oh, you uh, don't listen to this Quran. Don't listen to it at all. 
وَالْغَوْ فِيهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَغْلِبُونَ You see, the minute they used to listen to it, they were attracted to it. So they said, not only don't listen to it, when it is being recited, make a noise so that no one listens to it. Make a big noise. You know, you go into a fish market and you want to read Quran. Come on, it's the wrong place. Subhanallah. Allah expects you to be silent, quiet. وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنصِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ When the Qur'an is being recited, be quiet, be silent, listen attentively, digest, understand the words, so that you can earn the mercy of Allah. You know that. So the kuffar were doing the opposite. They were teaching each other, when the Qur'an is being read, don't listen, don't listen. And not only don't listen, make a noise, loud noise, so that no one listens, neither you nor anyone else. You know, together with that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still gave that message. It came across. Look at the verses revealed in Makkah were very short and sharp. So as they wanted to make the noise, the verse was already over. They were thinking about the meaning now in their minds. And then when they think it's over and they now don't, they even used to close their ears. Now they stop and they're waiting, thinking that it's gone. Another verse comes sharp, short, before you can... Start making the noise, that verse is already over. You're thinking about it. Two, three verses, they said he was a magician. Magician, magic. They also called him a madman. Astaghfirullah. They said, Majnoon. Astaghfirullah. Madman. This guy's a madman. How many of us have been accused of a madman? You know, when we say magician, people call one another magicians. They don't realize that statement is a very serious statement in the eyes of Allah. When you have a problem in your, in your own household, in your business, in your health, in your family, 90% of the time it's a medical issue. It is something explainable. You make dua, you try hard, you have a bit of medication, you change your diet, you go on the treadmill and exercise, you sweat for 45 minutes a day, the jinn runs away, right? But the difficulty with us is, after a little while we say, hey, you know what, three years things are not coming right. Three years, I'm sure someone did something on me. Then we go to Maulana, mashallah, Maulana. So instead of telling you, you know, make dua, read your mu'awidat, read your Quran, do this, perhaps use zamzam, use uh, honey, perhaps uh, black seed oil, ajwa date, whatever, olive oil, etc., etc. They tell you, someone did something on you. You know what? And it's your mother-in-law. <laughs> Finished. That's it, over. Did Jibreel alayhi salam come to this fellow to tell him who did what? Because there's always some sort of politics between you and your mother-in-law or your in-laws or someone in the house. That's why the famous statement is someone in the house did something on you. Because naturally every single house without one exception, there's a little bit of politics in the extended home. There's no exception to that. There has to be. So it's an easy thing. Your mind automatically goes to the last argument you had with your brother-in-law. And you say, hmm, makes sense. Malana is right. Now, that is wrong already because what is more important is to cure yourself. Not the lies of who it was. That's a bigger lie, normally from the jinn. And you know what happens? After that, we start accusing the lady, innocent woman. You know, she's a witch. Watch out, she does witchcraft. People say that to others in society. I'm sure in your society it must have happened. And it must be happening. Because all five fingers, everyone has them, right? So if I'm telling you something, I'm sure it's happening in your society. That woman, watch out, she's a witch. My beloved sister, if anyone said that you were a witch and you know that you are not, consolation in the fact that they called Nabi Wasallam a magician as well. It's only when Allah chooses you that you are going to be accused. The bigger the accusation, the higher the status in the eyes of Allah. They accused Nabi Wasallam of anything and everything. Al Utbah ibn Rabi'ah, he went to the Prophet on behalf of Quraysh and he told him, You know what? You, what do you want? Stop calling people towards something new here. What do you want? You want money? We give you money. So they accused him of going after money. How many ulama working hard, free, fi sabilillah, with almost nil resources, they are called scholars for dollars? For what? What did you gain by that? Why do you have to say that? But those of you who are working dedicated fi sabilillah, if you are called scholars for dollars and you know you are not, it is an honor. It is an honor because Rasulullah was also called something similar. He was told he is after money. We can give you the money, but just stop what you're saying. 
May Allah forgive us. You follow what I'm saying? What did you gain? What did you gain? You want to attend the program, attend it. You don't want to attend it, don't attend it. It's your loss. But don't accuse people. These accusations from the very beginning, they were only from shaitan. No one else. How can you accuse? A man who's calling you towards goodness, a man who's asking you to come closer to Allah, a man who perhaps whatever, and you know what? No one pays them anyway. The ulama are the worst paid in the ummah. I always say if you want to solve the problems of the ummah, the highest paid in the, in the community must be the imam of the masjid and then the mu'addin. When that is the case, you will not have a problem in your community. Because to go to the doctor, you're ready to take an appointment and wait for three months. You see the doctor for 15 minutes, you're paying 6,000 rands. Why? He's a super specialist. And you know what? You waited, you entered with him. The man is, there's no even sign that he's close to the deen of Allah. He could even be a non-Muslim. The amount of respect you offered him, you know why? You paid for every minute, subhanallah. When the ulama are highly paid, our children will all want to be ulama. You know why? Whatever the intention may be initially, but at the end of the day, they know these people are given respect, honor, dignity. Today, look at the children. They say, I don't want to be an alim, man. Look at how they talk about the ulama here. The ulama amongst themselves, the way they squabble and, and the way they fight and they want to outstrip and outdo one another with falsehood and lies, not realizing they're all working for the same boss. Who's your boss? It's Allah. Who's your boss? It's Allah. Are you ulama? Let's not wash this dirty linen in public. Let's look at the qualities of the heart. You know why we're suffering in the ummah today? One of the reasons is we ourselves have reduced within the minds and hearts of the young generations the love of the scholars by talking bad about every single one of them. Every single one. There's not one who is spared. Not one. You'll find some, some, someone somewhere has said something about this person. May Allah forgive us. We need to watch these accusations. I promise you, they started off at that time with Rasulullah Sallallahu And I'm talking about them today because we are speaking about the seerah. It's a consolation to all of us. Every one of us has been accused in one way or another. They'll tell you, they taught the same Utbah ibn Rabi'ah. He tells Muhammad Sallallahu you want women will get you married to the women you choose. You can have them. He was never after women. He was never after money. They said, this guy is after women. He's after money. The same accusations you will have against you, I will have against me, and others will have against them. It is an honor. It is a pure honor. Don't be depressed because accusations against you. They have accused those who were better than you. They have accused the best. They have accused Allah himself. They have accused Allah. If people could accuse Allah, subhanallah, who, who is you and I? Who are we? They will say anything. They'll call you a thief and you're not a thief. Just because you're a black man walking down the street, they say that guy's a thief. Straight. Brother, do you fear Allah? The man is the most honest. He probably in the eyes of Allah, in your community, the adab is not coming because of that man. Possible. And you're saying he's a thief just because he's a black man walking on the street. I'm, I have told you a fact, a reality. It doesn't mean that it's a crook. Watch your brain, watch your iman. Where's your deen gone, man? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. These accusations. You think it is basic, but in the eyes of Allah, it is huge. It is huge. Small accusation. They told the Prophet ﷺ, you know what, you want leadership. You want to be popular. You want to be the power. You want to have the power in your hands. We make you the leader, but keep this. They're accusing him of wanting power. No one wants power here. I'm just giving you a message. That's it. Allah is the one who raises. And Allah drops. My brothers and sisters, we need to be careful. Number one, our own tongues. Watch what you say. You want the companionship of Rasulullah Watch your tongue. Watch your mouth. Be careful how you speak, what you say. Even if others are saying bad words, you don't say them. If you receive a WhatsApp message which is derogatory about anyone, delete it. Don't forward it. Then you are a lover of Rasulullah 
Because at the time when Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha was accused, do you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that there were some people who created the whole accusation, but there were others who peddled it. They will also be punished to peddle an accusation. Why are you peddling it? Delete it and stop it from here and now. Go. But with us, we have arrived at an age, my brothers, my sisters as well, where when we receive a message, it is juicier than the mango juice we have in the morning. Juicy, very juicy. Ooh, look at this gossip. Ah, I'm just forwarding it. No, I didn't say it's true or false. I'm only forwarding it. And Allah says, Every one of you involved in any way, you have earned a portion of the sin. Don't delete it. You know when you have something bad comes to you in your phone, whatever it may be, if you have the power to delete it for the sake of Allah, perhaps Allah will resurrect you with the truthful on the day of judgment. Delete it. You don't need it. Leave it. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us the love of the ulama. The ulama are the heirs of the anbiya. The ulama are the heirs. The scholars are the heirs of the prophets. But they are not prophets. That's why there will be some qualities in them that you know this is the human quality. Sometimes you can have a big scholar, very well known, perhaps globally known. They will also make mistakes because they are not ambiha. They will also sometimes say things you will know automatically. Excuse him for this. It's his weakness. May Allah forgive us. So these are only some of the accusations I made mention of that were leveled against Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I want to end off by telling you that not a single one of them stayed longer than it was a curse to the people who made them up. They didn't. If they weren't mentioned for us in Revelation, we wouldn't even have known them. Right? But Allah mentioned it because it's a bonus to us. Like I said, watch your tongues. The second part of it was, if you have been accused of anything, stealing something you didn't steal, doing something you didn't do, being something that you are not, having involved in something you didn't, if you know, consider it an honor. It's a sign of closeness to Allah. Allah will test you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the reward on your sabr. And Allah will clarify and clear your name either in this life or in the hereafter or after you're gone people will then say wow that was a good man he did a lot of goodness may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive every one of us there are other ulama inshallah who will be speaking I pray that we can all benefit from whatever is being said today and I ask Allah to grant acceptance to all those who are seated here all those who will listen to this later on as well may Allah forgive our sins may Allah forgive the entire ummah may Allah have mercy on us May Allah unite us. May Allah help us respect one another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us remain steadfast and truthful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to honor all our ulama, our mu'addinun, those who are serving the deen, the imams of the masajid. These people are the real champions, the real champions of societies and communities. And if we respect them, and if Allah grants us the acceptance to respect them, it is a sign that we have understood and respected the Greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.